I want to start going through another example, and I'm just going to sketch this out. I'm not going to do it in great detail. So the starting point is that a particle is known to be in the right half of an infinite well. So, so that's your starting point. And we can say that particle is known to be in the right half of an infinite well with equal probability throughout the right half. So if that's your starting point, we have to say, well, how do we turn that into some math? Okay, so the first thing is we know it's the infinite well, so let's draw that out. All right, so V is going to infinity at our edges. We'll use our x equals zero, x equals L boundaries. We'll say then that we have a point which is L over two. And so what I'm gonna say is, okay, let me have this dashed line that will be psi equals zero, okay? For the left half, our wave function is zero. We, we know it's not in our left half. We know it's in our right half. And so in the right half, it has some value that I'll call A. And we say it's equal probability. So that's our starting point. I have drawn a visual representation of what our wave function is. So, so then, what do, what do we need to say? Okay, so we have some value which is basically going to be a piecewise wave function. We can then say, well, I need to normalize it. What does, what does A look like? Well, we know that one has to equal negative infinity to infinity of psi star x psi, right? And so that's going to be equal to, in this case, zero everywhere that is not L over two to L. And notice that we've said our wave function is just equal to A between these. So I can say, and we'll assume that A is positive and real so that I get to write that as A squared dx. Well, so when I integrate that, this A is just a constant. And so then I have A squared and then basically X evaluated from L over two to L. So then what I'm left with is one equals a squared L minus L over two is L over two. So what that means is a equals square root of two over L. So let me talk you through so far what I've already done. We started with a verbal description, a conceptual description of our, what a wave function is. I drew that out visually, defining what is my potential. That's key. Once it says infinite well, I know what that potential looks like, which means I'm going to know what my energy eigenstates are and their energy eigenvalues. I sketched out what that wave function was and then had to make sure it was normalized. So remember that normalization is always one of the first steps that you need to do. So now we might ask a question. I'm looking at my notes to figure out what that question is. Um, at a later time t. So at time equals capital T, what is the probability of measuring E3? Now, this is kind of a trick question, is that we don't actually need to know at a later time. The probability of measuring given energies does not change with time. If I said, what is the expectation value of position right now, it would be three quarters up. That's our average position. But I could say at a later time, what's the expectation value of position? That you would really need to introduce time dependence. If it's just the probability of measuring a certain energy, good news, that doesn't change with time. So, so what do we have to do here, right? So step one, we find what our wave function is. In this case, you weren't told the functional form. You had to find it and you had to normalize it, right? So step one is what is psi of x at t equals zero. And part of that is what is your potential? Make sure you know what this is. So step two is use your potential to figure out what your energy eigenfunctions are, those energy eigenstates, and your energy eigenvalues. We know what this is here because these are our, our infinite well states. Again, most common system because it's the one we can analytically solve Exactly. So next what we have to do is take our initial state here and express it as a sum, and I've written this down a few times already, you should know it's coming, 
as some coefficients which we have to find times our energy eigenstates, right? So we have to actually expand this out. And so we find these by, remember, doing that integral, and I, I'll write it in the general form, right, of our, our states, our energy eigenstates, times uh, the inner product, really, of what those quantum states are. And my marker is completely invisible, isn't it? Okay. So we have, we have the form of finding this. So then, once we actually have that, we can say that my state here is going to be the sum over n of my c sub n, which, I've, which I found in the prior step, phi sub n, which are the time independent ones, and then my e negative i e sub n t over h bar. So that's going to be the process here. So I've already done this first step, and I know that it's the infinite well, which means that my phi n of x are going to, and I never want to write this down wrong, is going to be square root of 2 over L sine of n pi x over L. You'll get really sick of writing that down. And then my e sub n, again, and I know this because this is my infinite well, are n squared pi squared h bar squared all over 2ml squared. Okay. So then the next step would be doing this integration. 